Welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Anna and it's our very first episode of Running With. I've enlisted the help today of Vassos Alexander. Now, you might recognise his name. He's the sports presenter on the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on Radio 2 and is also one of the voices on the weekly Park Run podcast, Free Weekly Times. Now, we're going to be running and chatting about running as we go. If you've got a suggestion of someone you would like to see featured on our Running With series, don't forget to leave a comment below. But for now, I'd better go, otherwise I'm going to be late. First of all, why did you decide to get into running? I didn't, I didn't, a good question, I didn't really decide to get into running. Um, I sort of decided to get fit or to stop being a bit fat. <laughs> um, I kind of noticed a little bit of a, of a flop of a belly flap fat over my belt one day when I was stopped in some traffic lights and I thought oh okay so this is what happens when you hit your 30s you can't you know you either start exercising or stop eating what you want or get a bit fat and actually getting a bit fat was um you know one of the options I actually properly <laughs> considered but I thought I'd try exercise didn't really like it like I hated the treadmill didn't like anything else in the gym the rowing but the first time I went for a run outside I just thought, okay, this is it. Even though it was terrible and I, you know, I barely got, I got started too quickly because I thought I'm, I'm running next to my neighbours here and I don't want them to, you know, see me running at <laughs> anything but, you know, sprinting pace. So I got to the end of my street and I had to sort of stop for a, stop for a puff. <laughs> but um, even then, even then I kind of knew I'd stumbled on something. And... Uh, and I just kept going at it really. I just, I never thought, I know, I want to do this more and more and more. But I knew I wanted to do it again. And I didn't, you know, I'm not fast, I'm not particularly good at it. I, I do run quite long distances, I guess. But um, that was never a plan. It was just, <laughs> I found something, I fell in love with it. And, you know, it ticks so many boxes that it just, suddenly I realised, you know, I'm almost at my happiest when I'm running. Yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to as well, that love of being outside and also pushing yourself further than you ever thought possible. So when you look back to that Vassos, when you first started, to Vassos now, who just goes and does 100 miles for fun. (laughs) um, Well, how does that, how do you feel about that? First of all, I'm wondering how I feel about the phrase 100 miles for fun <laughs> and I suppose I suppose I mean you know 100 miles is a kind of a proper distance and you I mean there, there are always bits that aren't fun in 100 miles like 50 miles you can knock out but 100 I think they say 100 is like 350s so I'm gonna I'm gonna slightly <laughs> object to fun but oh my dog's disgracing herself Hang on a sec. <laughs> you don't want to we'll film be that. back <laughs> 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 So if we uh, have a a bit of a talk about some of the achievements that you've uh, had along your running journey, top of my list to talk to you about is actually the Spartathlon. That's top of my list. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What a phenomenal race to do. For people who don't know what it is, could you just explain a little bit about what the Spartathlon is? It's it's a kind of, it's it's a very iconic, maybe the, maybe the ultra race, certainly the, the original ultra race. It's 153 miles between um, Athens and Sparta, these two Greek cities, um, over a mountain range. But the reason it kind of has significance is, so Pheidippides people might know, the Greek messenger who ran from Marathon to Athens, 26 or so miles, to announce news of a military victory, but kind of died when he got there. And, you know, all of us who run marathons have kind of him to thank for it, but he's a bit derided, poor old Pheidippides, you know, he couldn't even survive. He's a professional messenger, for goodness sake, he couldn't even survive a a sort of 25 mile, 26 mile jog from Marathon to Athens. Well, what people maybe don't know is a couple of days before it, the Persians, this massive, terrifying, bloodthirsty army of Persians landed on the shore in Marathon. And, you know, the Athenians, new democracy and we're kind of peaceful people in their city-state. They would have been absolutely terrified um, that they, you know, that their way of life was over. You know, the, the, the Persians were ransacking everyone. So their only hope, they thought, was to send 
a messenger over the mountain range to the Peloponnese, to, to Sparta, to ask for Spartan help. So they sent their best guy, Philippides, and he ran 150 odd miles to Sparta over the mountain. And according to legend, he arrived before night fell on the second day, so within 36 hours. Wow. So that's what we're recreating, sort of 300 or so ultra nutters every year. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to kind of qualify. I think you have to run 100 miles in less than 20 hours. I mean, there's sort of stringent qualifying criteria yeah. just to get in. And even then, only about half of the people finish because so much can go wrong in such a distance. And they, uh, they make it hard. They're the first marathon you have to do, I think, in 3.45 wow. or you're out. <gasps> and it's not flat either. It's, um, <laughs> it's undulating out, to, out of the hills out of Athens. Wow. And then the first 50 miles in whatever it is, nine hours I don't know but so they sort of they front load it to make it as high and it's so you know you go from 30 degree heat in the middle of the day to minus four and pouring with rain on top of a mountain <laughs> but the Greeks feel so strongly that you're honoring their history and culture yeah when you're running it there's traffic in Athens gets stopped for you no way. and they're all you know so you start on Friday morning in the middle of Russia and Athenian drivers are not known for their patience, but they're all beeping their horn in kind of support. I think it's support. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're sort of, they're delighted to have, you know, to have you there. And every village you pass through, there's just basically a party. You know, they're, they're, they're giving you food or, or support. Everyone's out, all the tavernas are open, even in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. And it is just, the greatest experience. I just about managed. I set off too fast, like everyone did, <laughs> does. Um, but I, I, you know, just about managed to complete it. And when you complete it, you come into Sparta. You can barely walk yeah. at this stage. You've been hallucinating. Your, you know, your legs are like solid concrete. Um, and the kids of Sparta come and they hold your hand. Oh. And everyone in the town is, you know, lining the street. 10, 15 deep, and then you go and instead of crossing a finishing line, you touch the statue, or kind of more charmingly kiss the statue oh. of the warrior king, Leonidas, and then that's you done. Then, <laughs> then, there's, a, then there's a medical tent, which you all have yeah. to go to. I was and, gonna say, then what do you do? Yeah, that looks like something out of a Vietnam War oh. film. But, um, but it was just, oh, the whole experience was just one of the most fantastic of my whole life. Because of, well, I have Greek heritage as well. Exactly. And yeah. I speak Greek and I was, I was under the Greek banner when I was there. But the way that the race is put on, the, what, what it means to the Greeks, the fact that it has this, you know, you feel the kind of the weight of history on your shoulders. You feel like you're running in exactly where Pheidippides might have been running. And this yeah. guy, you know, this guy gave birth to the modern marathon. Look how many people, you just come back from Berlin. Yeah. You know, so many of us run marathons because of this guy. And this was his, this was the important one. Yeah. This was his, uh, this is what he should be remembered for. Um, so it would just, it felt like the most exhilarating, difficult, um, wonderful race. And finishing it is one of the most kind of delicious experiences I've ever, I've ever had, certainly whilst running. And actually right up there, right up there, you know, getting married birth of children, yep. finishing Spartathlon. Oh, They're in the same sort of bracket. What do your loved ones and friends think when they see you in such a yeah. state, so my, having my, done something that you want to do? My wife and kids <laughs> came to the airport yeah. <laughs> and they saw me being wheeled through by this lovely Iranian man who worked at Heathrow. And especially my daughter who was, how old was Mary? She'd been three, just three at the time. She had no, she, you know, Daddy doesn't go to work. Daddy's the one who runs. Yeah. Daddy's, and it, it was a bit of a shock, even to the older ones. Um, and yeah, seeing me unable to climb stairs and the state of the sofa, the state oh. of our sofa downstairs in the front room when I'd finished, for some reason, I sweated. Yeah. Like, like maybe nobody's ever sweated before. Um, and we had, we had to get a new sofa, not only, the, you know, like a sofa cushion is that thick, yeah. 
In the middle of the night, I had to turn it over because it was so wet. No. So I turned it over, but the bottom was wet as well. <laughs> um, so having to cope with Dan in that state. I've never been in that state before, mind no. you, or since. Um, I think they quite like it. You know, my kids do park runs. Mary understands that running isn't necessarily easy. It's not as easy as sitting on the sofa, eating ice cream, watching telly. No. But the, the you know, the fact is, you gain from it. You know, you never regret going for a run. Yeah. And so I think seeing me in that sort of state maybe kind of reinforced that, um, that sort of that rule for her. It's not a rule, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and they also, I think, can see that, you know, you do an ultra run and you have this sort of deep sense of contentment afterwards, which is difficult to, to describe really, but it's, it's very kind of deep calm and happiness. Sort of better than happy, it's yeah. better than euphoric, certainly. It's just, just content. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, you know, I've got running to thank for that. Certainly running a long way to thank for that. Um, so first of all, do you measure it miles or kilometres? Miles, but you, I shouldn't. Well, because... It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and I started measuring in kilometres, and then I thought, well, no, nothing is measured in kilometres, so I may as well turn to miles, and people know what I'm talking about when I say a 6.30 mile. Yeah. And then, actually, I'm finding more and more people are measuring in kilometres. Certainly my pals from Barnes Runners all do. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm, I'm, I've changed once, I'm not changing again. So I'm... Uh, <laughs> Um, minutes per mile, man. Music or no music? No music. Ever? It's a bit awkward, because again, the, each chapter in the first book yep. was, a, was a running song. I know, I added them to my playlist. Yeah. <laughs> but by the time it came out, I completely ditched the headphones <laughs> and just enjoyed the experience. And people said, don't, don't you get bored? And OK, sometimes it's, you know, it's easy to sort of sink your, you know, your, your, your cadence to the to whatever the beat is and just you get a few free miles but you know even 30 hours running in that greek one non-stop no music yeah not for a single second did i get bored no um i mean my wife runs with music and w literally won't leave the house without her headphones um however much i try and persuade her so i do get it i do get that there are loads of people who who do need the music and brilliant if you do but i uh i sort of I really don't. I, I, I haven't even got a clue where my, uh, what they call the iP iPod shuffle things? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, um, I've got no idea where it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're going out for a training run, do you measure distance or time? Time. Nice. Yeah, time, only time. And sometimes I, I ditch the watch altogether. So today, before I met you, I ran home. Actually, I, today's a bad example because I tried <laughs> to do my work to home PB and ended up. <laughs> and how a, did that go for you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by two seconds. Oh, uh, but I did end up in a little pile of kind of lactate <laughs> on the uh, pavement outside our house today. Uh, huge disappointment and embarrassment of my wife, Caroline. <laughs> what are you doing? You know people around here. Um, but sometimes I'll make sure I don't have a clue what time I start the run so that I don't measure, you know, when I'm in Hyde Park. Um, is it, you know, I know, I know there's a certain street post yep. about half a mile from, from work and I can kind of gauge how fast I am when I get there. But I, I sometimes just purposefully go, no, no, I'm doing an easy run or even not an easy run, even a, a tempo run or a fartlek run. But I don't feel like you need to, that I, as a sort of bang average middle-aged runner, need to sort of worry about heart rate zones or yeah. you know exact intervals just you know i can do the, the harder run and just just feel it but then i'm quite um i'm quite hippie about that i suppose yeah. you know um but it's a sort of choice I, I kind of i like being hippie about it and then finally if you don't know already um vassos is uh, one of the presenters of the park run podcast um, so for you, Vassos, yes. can you describe parkrun in three words, please? No, you don't have to ask me that. Ask <laughs> everyone else that. Um, I'm going to say very, extremely wonderful.
I just want to talk to you about your pre-race meals when you run with your cousin. Oh, that's yes. Off. I love this. So for me, the night before a race, big bowl of pasta, making sure I'm carb loading, nothing new that I've not had before. You don't yeah. want to have a dodgy tummy on race day. Yeah, um, which are all very sensible things, by the way. Yeah, um, you, you take a different approach to that. Well, we went to <laughs> Barcelona. It was my first marathon and we ended up in some Catalan restaurant with most weird and wonderful kind of concoctions. You know, massive onions dripping in oil and uh, I can't remember what else, you know, big sausages and, and things. And we sort of, we went to town a bit, had a couple of beers, thinking we might regret this tomorrow, but we didn't. And then it became our thing. We would do one night sort of European marathon odysseys where we would turn up on the Saturday night, have dinner, the bigger, the more lavish, the better not actually getting drunk but definitely not you know abstaining yeah and uh, run a marathon the next day and then fly home on, on some occasions having to run a marathon in a certain time in order to make the flight home <laughs> um, but uh, yeah no it was, it was something so joyful and sort of carefree and a bit punk yeah. about, about meeting my cousin you know in some European city where we'd never been before finding the most kind of local eclectic restaurant and stuffing our faces <laughs> before running 26 miles the next day. Usually for a PB, that was the same time as I was trying to, to break three hours. Do you keep your medals? <laughs> I do. Where? Um, there's, a, there's a light hanging around behind a door in our bedroom. Yeah. And uh, I just started putting them over that. Now there's loads of them. The one I don't have, the only one I don't have is the 20... 16 London Marathon, which was the first London sub three, yeah. and there were three of us. And I managed to, I was, everything was working well that day. I managed to pace a couple of pals to sub three as well. And we all crossed the finish line and had a big hug, and we'll always kind of have that day. And it's one of my favourite ever runs. Yeah. Just for what it meant to all of us. And that's the only medal. I've got no idea where it is. Oh no. I'd probably swap all of the others. Yeah. For that one. <sighs> If anyone's got a spare one, yeah. they want to lend us off, that'd be lovely. I wouldn't give it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's super. Well, thank you so much thank for coming you. and chatting to us today. It's been great. Um, what a lovely day to be on Wimbledon Common. We couldn't have picked a better day for it. <laughs>